Hey, what's going on, Wealth Giants? Ryan here. Today, we're going to be talking about trailing versus forward PE ratios of companies and how they can help you become a better investor. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of the two, the differences between the two, and when you would look at one versus the other. Now, fair warning, I'm not going to talk too much about what a PE ratio is. I already made a video about that. And if you are looking at what a PE ratio is, I will leave a tag up above as well as a link down in the description below for you to watch first. And when you feel comfortable with that, you could come back and learn about the forward and trailing PE ratios. But if you already know what a PE ratio is, please just stay tuned. Now, first, if you're new to the channel and are interested in wealth building strategies such as stock market investing and want to see me personally take my portfolio from a very small amount to a large amount over time, please consider subscribing to my channel by hitting that subscribe button down below. Uh, I started this channel six or eight months ago with about 4,000 and now we are well above 10,000 and with everything that's going on in the market and all so i feel that's pretty cool so and if you find value in this video and you want to support me please consider smashing that like button for the youtube algorithm helps people like yourself find my videos so that would be much appreciated so please and thank you so let's go ahead and jump right into this so a quick refresher on what a PE ratio in case we're forgetting a few details it is essentially a company's fair price point evaluator it helps you determine whether or not a company is overvalued undervalued or at equal value. So you would take the PE ratio of a company you are investigating and you would take it and compare it to the company's industry's average PE ratio. And that'll tell you whether or not the company is overvalued or undervalued. Uh, so if the company that you're looking at is got a PE ratio above the industry's average it is essentially overvalued. And if it is below that PE ratio, it is essentially undervalued. Now, this doesn't always tell you whether or not it's fair evaluation because you want to know whether or not this company is going to survive over the next five to 10 years. You want to make sure that the company is making money and that you are uh, going to buy something that is going to make you money in the future. So this can be helped by looking at the 10 Ks and the 10 Qs and things like that. Uh, so sometimes what happens though is people think that the price of the company is uh, a fair value just because it is low. Uh, so I get people sometimes asking me, oh, I found this company is under $5. I think it's a good buy. And I'm like, well, let's take a step back. And I ask them a question and it's an analogy. Uh, would you go out and buy a pack of gum for a hundred dollars? Let's say, you know, it makes your breath minty fresh. You, you can blow bubbles with it and, Obviously, the answer to that question is no. They wouldn't buy a pack of gum for $100 when they could go down the street and essentially buy it for under a dollar. And then I come back with a follow-up question saying, well, would you go out and buy a brand new off the lot, all features included Tesla Model S uh, for $10,000? And they're like, well, and sometimes I have to explain, this is a hundred plus thousand dollar car. And they're like, well, yeah, of course I will. Uh, that's, that's a steal of a deal. And it's like, exactly. You want to find the steal of a deal stocks. So you have to be able to determine whether it is over or undervalued based on the PE ratio, which is how the forward and trailing PE ratio come into play. So the PE ratio I guarantee you are most familiar with is the trailing PE ratio. And that is because it is provided on the stock detail page provided by most financial institutions. And this is going to be shown on the screen. So you know what I'm talking about. And so the PE ratio is the trailing PE ratio and sometimes is displayed with a TTM beside it. The TTM just stands for trailing 12 months. And so this just means that they took the last 12 months of earnings or four quarters of earnings and took the average EPS and threw it into the PE ratio equation. So they took the price divided by the last four quarters average earnings per share and came out with the trailing PE ratio. Now, forward PE ratio is slightly different and is more an estimation or a guess, essentially, uh, an educated guess of where the company's earnings will be in the future. So a company comes out with their earnings and then provides guidance. And the guidance is essentially what they are educatedly guessing their earnings to be in the future. Well, analysts then come along and say, hmm, this is your guidance. Well, let's use our outside tools and resources and our educated guesses, and we will determine where we feel your earnings per share will be in the future. Sometimes they are more bold and sometimes they are more uh, scarce on what they think their earnings per share will be. Well, then they take this educated guess and throw it into the PE ratio equation, taking the price of the stock, dividing it by the guesstimated or predicted earnings per share. 
and that provides the forward PE ratio. So now that we know how we calculate the forward and the trailing PE ratio, let's go ahead and figure out how to use them to help you become a better investor. Now, what you do is you are going to compare them. You're going to take the forward PE and compare it to the trailing PE ratio. And say the trailing PE ratio is at 15 and the forward PE ratio is at 20. Well, because the forward PE ratio is now a higher than the trailing PE ratio, this means that the analysts are very bearish on the company. They think that it's not going to produce as much earnings in the future as it has in the past and therefore is not as attractive of a buy for investors. Now let's say the reverse happens and say the trailing PE ratio is at 15 and the forward PE ratio is at 10. This now indicates that the analysts are extremely bullish on this company and saying, man, this company it has got high potential. It's going to produce more earnings in the future than it has in the past. And therefore, investors should be extremely interested in investing in this company. Now, remember, higher forward PE ratio than the trailing PE ratio is not a good sign, whereas a lower forward PE ratio than the trailing PE ratio is extremely bullish and a good sign for investors to start investing in. So the great thing about trailing PE ratio is that it is based off of actual numbers. All right. The company performed, they made their sales, they got their earnings and they plug it all into the trailing PE ratio. And with that produces that number. So it is not a guess. It is what they have done. However, the downside to this is that it is what they have done in the past. It does not predict their future performance. So that is when you want to look into the 10 Ks, the 10 Qs, uh, their management team, news outlets that talk about the company. You want to look into analysts opinions about it. And you also especially want to focus on what you see the company doing in the next two to five to 10 years, as long as you plan on investing in that company. Another downside is, is that it's only based off of four data points, the last four quarters of earnings. I recommend going back and looking at previous years before that and seeing how they have performed and how they have overcome challenges and seeing how they can adapt or how they have adapted to the times and the demand of their customers. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and move to the forward PE ratio. So forward PE ratio, the great thing about it is a prediction of how the company's sales will go in the future. It is done by the company who knows a lot about the demand, as well as analysts who have dedicated a lot of time and efforts to that particular estimation of how they were, will perform in the future. Downside to this, it is a guess overall. Um, there's no changing that. Demand could change for that company because another company comes in with a better product that drives customers away. Natural disasters could change the demand drastically. I mean, we are seeing this currently with a particular illness going on. Uh, so you want to be aware that how they will overcome challenges like those to make sure that their company does not go through hard times that could potentially harm them and cause them to go bankrupt and lose you money with your investment. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me get noticed on YouTube. It helps people like yourself find my videos on YouTube. Also, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing by hitting that ugly mug over to my right. It looks just like this one, and I will see you guys in the next video.